So we click view, it changes it to view. We click edit, changes it to edit. We click new, it's the blank form. We click reset, it's back to what we selected. Hey everyone, this is my SharePoint questions and today I'm going to go back to basics and talk about Power Apps Forms. I feel like I'm getting a lot more questions about the basics. Maybe people are back in school. It's really neat to hear from you guys that, you know, you're using Power Apps in college. Uh, I didn't have that opportunity. I didn't learn until I was actually a Microsoft consultant. So I want to go through a few things here. So I'm going to tell you some tips about how to make these perfect forms, make them quick, easy, and Power Apps. So I have a SharePoint list here, right? A few different fields, right? It's a very basic SharePoint list. So let's go into Power Apps. Now I have a lot of Power Apps here. Most of these are just um, demos or demonstrations. But when you click New App, you have three options, right? You have Canvas, Model Driven, or Portal. Canvas, you can use anything as a data source or any connection. Model Driven, CDS, Dataverse only premium license portals this is for external facing uh, using a website dataverse only you can embed a power app in inside of portals but I mean I, I don't understand why you would do that because you still need the licenses only internal people can use a canvas app so let's create a brand new canvas app so I went ahead and connected my power app to my SharePoint list so we have a completely blank Power App, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do an out-of-the-box form. Now, if you don't like out-of-the-box forms, I suggest you do these two forms first before you try and patch. It's just much easier. Normally, I do edit. So we're gonna do edit form. Now, when you add an edit form, and ask you to connect to data, right? So we're gonna connect to that SharePoint list, all right? So I changed my data source to my events list. That's right here in SharePoint, events. That's the name of my SharePoint list. I connected to it. This is what came out of the box, right? We have our event name, which is actually my title field in SharePoint, and we have a few different fields and an attachments field, right? So you can easily come in here and drag and drop and move your fields around. So uh, this is where you know you get a little iffy in here people try and move things what you do is you click on the field and then the black box drag and drop that moves it around so you can move change the order of your fields now you want to be careful where you're clicking around right so if I click here in the white space you'll notice on the left side I've highlighted the form if I click in here I I highlighted the card and inside the card you have many different uh, properties so you, right here we have the data card value the title and this is just a label that's all these are and then an error message that's just another label and a star it's another label now if you want to remove one of your fields all you got to do is click in on the field on the data card click delete on your keyboard attachments is now gone we don't need to upload attachments right now for this form Another way to edit the fields in the form is to come on the right side, have your form selected in the properties, edit fields. Now you'll see here I can add fields or edit the fields. I can click on one and change the control type. Now, if I were to come into a field and unlock it, I'm not going to be able to change the control type. So don't unlock a field until you have changed the fields to what you would like if you want it to be a drop down. Now when I come into edit fields, you'll see I can come to, let's say, event type. I can change it to either a multi-line text, allowed values, a phone number, email, rich text, edit rich text. So I can change the field to those different types. I can come into add fields. And I can bring any of the out-of-the-box fields that come with a form in. So I can bring in modified, modified by. I can bring in the ID. So let's bring in the ID. I brought in the ID. Now here's another way you can change the order. I can drag ID to the top, and it changes the order here also. 
And uh, if you notice in the control type, we have a few different ones. ID is, is like a number in SharePoint, so we have percentage and rating. Now, we have the form. This is where the do the math comes in, right? We have three columns, three columns. Now, if we come into our card and we go to the size, you'll see the width is 430. If we want more space and for this card to take up space, we really should double it exactly, right? So some, from 430, we'll change the width to 860. Now that gives us more space. The reason why we want to do the math is because if we do less, you know, it, it, it fights us, it starts doing funny things. Just do the math, change it to 860. Each of these cards is going to snap into place. And that's just uh, one way that the forms work. You can make it just automatically snap, right? And so you want to keep that on. There are ways to turn that off, turn off the automatic snap of the form. Right here, snap columns. Don't do that. You're going to make a mess. It's going to take you forever to edit it. Just do the math, change the width to 860. Now that we have building name larger, we gave it more space. Let's do event type. So I'm going to drag event type over. I'm going to change it to 860. That gives us the large width again. But let's say, oh, um, event type, maybe this was supposed to be a multi-line text field. So we can come to edit fields, change event type, and change it to multi-line text that gives us more space, right? And say we wanted more space, we can just drag it open, both parts, so you have to be careful where you're clicking on. So this is the card. Inside the card, you'll see we have many different things. In the value, we can drag that open now and make the card larger. So now when we, we can see that we have a lot more space. All right, so this is where I was saying, if you hit the play button, if we hit play, it's blank. Oh no, it's blank, what am I gonna do, right? All right, so why is it blank? It doesn't know what you want in each one of the forms. So let's say we have a form here. Now, we can use a gallery, a data table, or a collection to populate our form. Let's just do a gallery. I like to start with the vertical gallery here, not the blank gallery. It just comes with some extra functionality that I like. All right, so we have our gallery. What do we want to do? We want to change the data source, our SharePoint list. All right. So these are the same options that are in our SharePoint list. Now, if you look in a gallery, if you ever want to edit the gallery, you always edit the top part here. So if we click down, you'll notice that we'll, we'll highlight the whole gallery. If we want to edit, we edit the top part. So we're going to come in here, delete the picture. It's going to give us a red X. It's just saying hey, based on the image width and we remove the width. So now, we're going to drag it up, give ourselves more space, and we're actually going to take out this item.id. We just want simple gallery, and we'll shrink it down. Now, this is the exact uh, thing as my SharePoint list. This is just my title field or my event name, right? So let's go to our form. In our form, in the advanced screen, we have the item field. This is how the form knows what you want to edit. In our item field, what we want to do is set this equal to our gallery. So my gallery is gallery one. So our item field is going to be gallery one dot selected. And that is going to populate our form based on what we have selected. So whichever one we click on, it's going to populate our form, right? That is how you populate your form on the previous selection. Let's give ourselves a little bit more space at the top here. Now that you have a gallery, one thing that I recommend is that you make it so it highlights what you have selected. 
So how do you do that? You go to your gallery in your template fill. You say if this item, so this item is the gallery, is selected, then we want RGBA and we'll add some colors in there. We'll change it to 240, 240, 255, 1. So now when we press play and we click on our gallery, whichever one we have selected is now highlighted. Now you can make these pop too in your gallery. You do have the options to, if we come in here, transitions, we have pop and push. So we can change transition. Now let me do it up here. If we come up here, transition, we have a few different options. So if we go transition dot none, pop and push, we'll just do pop. So now when we press play, you'll see that it kind of pops out as we, as we hover over. And you can see our form is now uh, filling out. All right, so in our form, we have three different modes, right? We have new mode edit mode and view mode so let's add a button we're gonna add a button and we're gonna change it to new form so all we do is do new form and what's the name of our form form one now you're gonna to want to change change the name of your forms later on but for right now for simplistic reasons I'm just gonna keep it as form one and we're gonna change the text to new all right, so we have a new button. We come in here, we press play, click new. It's blank, right? So now we have a new form. We can write in here, change some of the data, but we can't save, all right? So let's do a button for save. Input, button. This one's gonna be save in our text. Now on the select, what are we gonna do? We're gonna submit form form one this is going to save so now we click play we click save look our gallery is now populated right with the next line item all right so now we click new and we're saying oh no we didn't want new we wanted to highlight we wanted to see all right so the next button button is reset now you can name it whatever you want for your uh, users, but for this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna reset form, form one. And this just resets it back to the default. So we're in new right now, we click reset. Boom, it's back to populating our whatever selected. So we have new, blank, we can save it if we want. Then we can reset it back to the selected. Next, what do we want to do? We want to change to either edit or view, all right? So I'm going to slide these buttons over. I'm going to add a new button. This is going to be our view. So how are we going to change the, the form to view? Well, we have to create a variable. There's two types of variables. Global variables, which is across your whole Power App. Context variables, which is just for this screen. We're gonna do a context variable. So on select, we're gonna say update context. In parentheses, curly bracket. We're gonna name this variable form mode. And then we're gonna do a colon, and that's gonna be form mode dot view. And then close our, our brackets and the parentheses. So, now that we have a button that changes it to form view, I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna create another button, and this is gonna be our edit. And I'm just gonna go ahead and on the select, I'm gonna paste it in there, update context, form mode, edit. All right, so we have a variable called variable form mode, and then depending on which button we select, it's gonna change the form mode. So we're gonna go back to our form. In our form, in our advanced properties, we have default mode. We have default mode. Default mode is edit. We're going to change that to our variable, variable form mode. 
All right. So we click view, it changes it to view. We click edit, changes it to edit. We click new, it's the blank form. We click reset, it's back to what we selected. All right. So we have all this on our form okay. next. What happens when we save or submit our form? We need to show a success message or an error message, right? You've got to give input back to the user. So I'm going to exit here, the preview. We're going to go to our form on success. We're going to say notify. Or I'll do it up at the top here. On success, notify. What do we want to say? Success. Your line item was submitted. You know, just whatever you'd like. Then you can press comma. Now Power Apps is going to give you a little input. It's saying, hey, you have a few different options that you can say here. You can do error, information, success. That's just the color. We're going to say success. Close parentheses. Now on failure, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say notify on failure. Your, form, your line item was not submitted. Notification type, error. All right, so let's go ahead and submit one. Let's do a new form success. We hit save. We now have at the top success. Your line item was submitted. Now this will go away over time or you can click the little X and close it down. I'll just let it go away over time. You see it faded out. These are basics to forms. Uh, another thing you want to do, everyone loves to see it, to home themes. You have different themes. Change the color of your form. And so those are the basics of the out-of-box form in Power Apps. So if we go back to SharePoint, you can see that we have now written into SharePoint. We can write to SharePoint, have success, fill out our fields. Now, if you wanted to delete, how do you delete? Well, we need one more button. Let's do it inside our gallery. I feel like this is the best way. Inside our gallery, let's just make a little icon. So insert icon, and we want the trash can. The trash can. On select, we're going to say remove. And it's going to, first it wants to know the collection, or that's your data source. Well, mine is the SharePoint list called events. And what do we want to remove? This item. So we come back up here, hit play, hit our trash can, and then removes it from our gallery. Also removes it from SharePoint if we hit refresh. Now that item is gone. So I just wanted to get back to the basics, show everyone how to do the basic out-of-the-box forms. Once you understand this concept, then I will recommend you to learn patch statements. Thank you guys for watching. I know this was very basic, um, but uh, people are throwing these questions at me left and right. And so we just wanted to get back to the basics of a form in Power Apps. Thank you for watching.